Hi, and welcome to my channel. Django would like to start out the video by saying hi. So we're going to let him say hi, and then we're going to put him down. And hopefully, he will go find something to do. I wanted to talk today about a website I found about conversations about books and reading. And I just thought that this was really cute. Like, I was looking for questions that people have about reading like what do people want to know and what do people ask because I have a lot of opinions about reading and I thought this would be something that I could share or I could talk about what I think about reading and books and that kind of stuff but I quickly found this website which I'm gonna link down below but it's called Bonafide Bookworm okay I guess Django's just gonna stay here so if you see ears or if you see Okay, any other stuff from down here or if my hands are doing weird things, it's because I'm petting Django. Anyway, I, 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 the thing that I like about this website is that it says it's 65 conversation questions. So like things that you could bring up with people. Now, of course, you don't want to act like you're sitting there interviewing somebody. So you're not going to say, hey, what is this? And what is this? And what is this? You're not going to go down the list asking questions. But I think this website is at least a cool place to go start and look at some questions that are on there. And it's a good way to like organically bring up books and reading and stuff like that. Because I don't know about you guys, but when I have to go somewhere and make small talk, I cannot stand it. Like, I love being around people, but let's have discussions. Like small talk is the worst thing in the world for me. I just, I do not like it. So a lot of people feel like I go really deep, really quickly. And that's because I can't do the surface stuff. Like if you wanna know everything about my life, you generally just have to ask one question and then I'm off to the races. But I think I'm gonna start picking one or two of these questions and just keeping them in the back of my mind whenever I have to go somewhere new and then asking them to people just organically and seeing what, what they have to say. So the first section of questions is about reading. So it's specifically like, what's the scariest book you've read? What's the funniest book you've read? What's the saddest book you've read? I have a little bit of a problem with those questions as a reader because I can't name just one, but so maybe I will ask the question like, what's a really funny book that you read? Like, do you have, do you read funny books? Because I sometimes really like to read funny books. Whatever genre they fall into, it always makes it better to me if there's humor involved. So I also like one of the questions just says like, what's the last book that you read? I have found that quote unquote normal people who are non book obsessed, <laughs> they may read just one book a month or one book every other month or something that sounds so weird to me like that. And so asking like, what's the last book you've read? They may have to sit and think about it for a second, especially if they're not normally a reader. I do like this one. This one says, how do you choose what you want to read? And I think that would be really funny if somebody just randomly at a place, like you're at some kind of dinner or something, you're sitting next to these people that you might not know very well. And somebody says, how do you put pick what books you wanna read? And then I say, well, I have a Monopoly game that has these things on it and I roll the dice and it tells me like, <laughs> I just feel like you're gonna get a lot of weird stares if you just jump out of the gate saying TBR games is how you, pick your books. But I would like to see what other people say. So I do think that's a question that I'm going to ask people because it's interesting to me how other people pick their books. Then she's also got other questions broken down into the fun questions for readers about their favorite things. And so it's like, what's your favorite genre and favorite book and favorite author and favorite place to read? Now, I know there are some tags that talk about these things, like your favorites. And, and these are not probably things that I would ask a virtual stranger that we're just meeting for the first time. So I don't know that that one would really work for me, any of these like favorites, because again, as a reader, it's really hard for me to pick all those favorites. Now my favorite place to read, I do have a favorite place to read, but that could just also be anywhere that I'm able to sit and put my feet up. So it could be at the recliner in my living room or my bed or <laughs> sometimes at my desk where I just lean back and put my feet up. I have lots of places. So I don't know that I have a, a favorite thing. They're, they She also has on here, what's your favorite snack to eat while reading? I don't really have one of those. So I don't know. That might be like a 
a conversation stopper if people are like, I don't read, eat while I read or whatever. So I don't know. I don't know if that's a good one to ask. But then she has best questions for book lovers. And I love some of these, especially she says, what makes you love a book? And I just think that that's a really good question to make people stop and think, what makes you love a book? Now, I know if you've watched my videos for a long time or any any length of time, you know that I love good characters. And that almost exclusively can make me love a book. Now, I do need a little bit of plot, but for the most part, if you give me some really good characters, they don't have to be doing a whole lot for me to love the book. Another thing that that she asks, sorry, the dogs. Another thing she asks is what makes you recommend a book? And I think this is interesting because I find it hard for me to recommend a lot of books without a lot of caveats, right? So I'll say, I think you should read this if you, da da da. You know, like I can't, I have a really hard time just saying this book is great and just stopping right there because I feel like it's great to me for certain situations and for certain reasons. And so when I'm recommending books to people, it makes it hard for me to do a blanket recommendation. So I would really need to know who am I recommending this book for and not just here is what I do to recommend a book. Now, almost always I recommend books that I really like. If I'm recommending a book and I didn't like it or I didn't finish it, I'm very conscious of saying what the good things about the book is and then the reason why it wasn't right for me. That doesn't mean it's not gonna be somebody else's most favorite book. It's just not for me. So it's not one that I liked, but I could still recommend it for people who like that certain thing that I didn't. I hope that that makes sense, but book recommend recommending is so difficult without some kind of narrowing of the recommendation, I feel like anyway. There are a lot more questions. She has questions in here about ebooks over physical books and which ones do you like? Do you, what's the last book you purchased? Was it physical or ebook? And those kind of discussions, I think you could easily have with people that you're just sitting down to dinner with for the first time. I just feel like, and then there are other questions that I think you need to know more information about they want to know, one of the questions is, is there a TV, is there a series that you would love to see made into a TV show? And then also, is there a TV or movie adaptation that you think is better than the book? And so those are some very interesting questions as well, but that definitely goes into a more in-depth discussion. And I still feel like you can't ask that question unless you know that the person you're talking to is a reader. Like that's gonna be the caveat for all of these questions. Like once you ask the question, do you like to read or are you a reader or do you read fiction or nonfiction and kind of like gauge where they are in their reading experience then you can jump into some more of these questions but i feel like there are some of these that you just can't jump right into i do love do you judge a book by its cover that's one of the questions on here and i want to say no i don't do that but that's completely not true i absolutely do that <laughs> There are so many times where I'm scrolling and looking at maybe books that are on sale and the first thing I see is the cover. Now I will then go look and see what it's about or see what genre it's in or something like that before I officially hit purchase. I very rarely am going to buy something just based on the cover without knowing anything about it. I did do that one time, it turned out fantastic, but Normally, I do not do that. Then, I love the very end section that she has on here, which is a whole series of would you rather questions for book nerds. So I'm gonna ask a couple of these. I'm going to give my answers, and then I want you guys to share below your answers. I also want you to share what you think about asking these questions to somebody that you just sat down to dinner with. And would you feel comfortable doing that? Like, is that better for you than just like, well, we've been getting a lot of rain lately, or how did you end up at this dinner? Like, I don't know. I just feel like these questions would at least be more entertaining to me asking them than those generic ones that we ask all the time. Okay, these would you rathers, I really want you guys to go down and check the description box below and click on the link and go check out these would you rathers because I'm only gonna do four of them, but these are really hard and really good. So this one, 
Would you rather not be able to read any new books or not be able to reread any books ever again? Now, this one immediately made me think about Dairy from Dairy Reads It Again. And you definitely need to go check out her channel. I will link it down below. But I would never reread any books. That would be fine with me. I barely reread books now, so I would definitely not reread. But I want you to go check out Dairy and find out why she reads it again. Okay, the next one. Would you rather... This one is awful. Would you rather be able to only read the first page of a book or only be able to read the last page of a book. Y'all, I have no idea what I would say right here. Like, I mean, I wanna say that I would love to read the first page of a book, but then to never know what happens at the end, but then also the last page might not actually tell you what happens. I feel like this needs to be chapter. The first chapter of a book or the last chapter, I would totally pick the last chapter, I think. I still don't know. Like, that would be very unsatisfying to know what happens but not know how they got there. I don't know. That one is an impossible question. Okay, and here we go right here. Would you rather be able to read one book a year for the rest of your life, only one a year, or be able to read 100 books this year but then never read another book again? I mean, I want to say one book a year for the rest of my life, but oh my goodness, that's not 100 books. That's not a hundred books. So, but then I just don't know that I could never read another book the rest of my life. Like, that's awful as well. I'm going to go with the one book a year for the rest of my life. Okay, and then the last one. Would you rather have the book's ending spoiled for you or never know the ending? This is awful as well because either you can read the whole story up to the ending and never know the ending or you read part of it and then somebody says, oh, well, he dies at the end. Like, I guess that's what I'm going to go with because then at least I would know what happened even if it was spoiled for me, which would be horrible, but at least I know what happened. Anyway, I love these would you rather questions. I think that they're so fun. I would never ask those to anybody that I'm sitting at dinner with. But I think it would be funny. Now, maybe if you're in a book club, you bring this whole website to your book club and you're like, hey, we're going to spend five or ten minutes at the beginning talking about these questions because I think they're funny. And then, and then go on and discuss whatever your book is. Or discuss the book and then ask these questions at the end. I don't know. But I just think that this was such a cool website with so many cool questions that I... I mean, I've thought about them in different ways, but this Would You Rather section is very unique and I've not thought about it. So please click on the link below and go check it out. I just think that it's so interesting. And definitely let me know down below what you would do and what you wouldn't do and everything else about the Would You Rathers. Don't forget to check out Derry's channel and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.